if you're wondering what all those boxes are all about, I am moving and it is not where we thought we would be going. So if you want to know more and to hear about how I'm going to take all of my planner supplies and stationery on the road, just stay tuned. Okay, so welcome back to Heart Breathings. Today I'm going to just kind of tell you what's been going on. I've been getting a lot of questions over on Instagram and in my DMs and everything else, so I thought now is the best time to kind of explain the craziness that is taking place in our lives right now and how that's going to affect the channel and my planning and the notebook challenge and everything else. So I'm going to do my best to explain this in as simple or clear of a way as possible because we are definitely having to move all of a sudden. If you've been following my story for a little while, you know that last September, my husband and I signed a contract to build a new house here in the Charleston area. We were super excited about it. It's a beautiful home. It has everything we were looking for. And since I work 100% from home and I am the sole support in terms of finances for our family, it's super important that I have a nice office space and that we also have a gaming space for our family and then everybody needs a bedroom. So we have some pretty specific needs and then we have some pretty specific desires like a screened in porch. I would love to have a home that has a water view. So there were a lot of things we were looking for and it seemed like this house checked all the boxes. So for the past many months, we have been going out to the home site, watching the build, checking things out every single weekend. But sadly, maybe two months ago now, we got notice that the builder canceled all of the contracts for the entire community. So it's 14 homes and 14 families that were affected by this. Now, I won't go into all the specifics. Yes, we tried to talk to an attorney. It doesn't seem like we have any kind of case. Builders are canceling contracts all over the country due to all all the rising costs of lumber and other materials. So it was something that was outside of our control and it doesn't seem like there's really anything we can do about it. So basically they canceled the contract and said that at some point in the future, could be another month from now, it could be three months from now, we don't know. They're going to give us a new market value price for the house and at that point we will have 72 hours to decide whether we still want to buy it before they will put it up on the market. And of course we spent some time trying to figure out if we could fight this, what we could do about it, and it just doesn't seem like like there's anything we can do. So sadly, that is the situation we're in. And the discussion is that the price is probably going to raise at least $100,000. And at that point, we're not 100% sure that it's really the right house for us at that price point. So there, that's stress point number one. <laughs> stress point number two is that in Charleston, just like many cities around the country, there is very low inventory. So it's not like we can just let go of that house and buy another house because we haven't been able to find one single house that has an office for me, a gaming space for the family, and all the bedrooms that we need and space that we need. So there's no other options. So what we had decided to do was we we're gonna stay in our rental house where we've been for a little over two years enter the next part of the process. So we just got news less than two weeks ago that our landlord here, who actually was literally just standing in our house less than a month ago, telling us that he would work with us no problem, has decided that the market is too hot right now and he wants us out so that he can bring in someone who is willing to sign a long-term lease at a much higher rate. So despite trying to negotiate with him, he is refusing to let us stay. So as of August 31st, we basically have nowhere to go. So the other stress point is that just like there are very few houses on the market for purchase, there are also very few houses that have what we need for rent and everybody who's renting out houses wants you to sign at least a one-year lease because the rental rates are so high they want to lock you in at those rates and we don't feel it's in our best interest to sign a year lease when this other house might come available or we might find another house to purchase so <sighs> That is about the fastest I think I can explain that. And I know there are always questions, there are criticisms and things like that, but just know that we have looked at every possibility, we have spoken to attorneys, we have looked at every choice available on the market, and we would have to make great sacrifices that we're not willing to make to stay here in Charleston. So 
This is where our new journey comes into play. I am a firm believer that sometimes when we get really quiet, we can hear the pull or the whisper of change coming toward us. And I know that this sounds very woo-woo and strange, but it's just a firm belief that I have that there's something in our soul or call it God or the universe, but there's something sometimes when we listen that is a whisper that says, this is not meant for you, or there are other things on the horizon. Change is coming for you. And I have felt that whisper or heard that whisper for the last several months. And I actually had decided to start a project that I'm calling Six Months for Life. And it literally just started right before we got the news that we weren't going to stay here. And I have been journaling and asking the universe for an opportunity to expand and grow and to hit the next level of who I am meant to be. And I'm always working through, you guys know if you've been here for a while that I've been working through anxiety and all kinds of other problems. And I just have felt that I was on the edge of massive change. And in fact, when I set up my planner for six months for life, I had this quote put on it that says, and suddenly you know, it's time to start something new and trust the magic of new beginnings. And I have felt that magic of a new beginning coming. And of course, I thought the new beginning would be the new house, but it seems that there are other plans for me. And so when we started talking about it, my husband George and I decided that maybe this was the perfect opportunity for our family to travel a bit and explore other states or other cities where we might want to live and to just kind of take our family on a little adventure. We are super, super lucky that I'm the only one in the family that has a job and I can work from anywhere that I have an internet connection. And that may not always be the case because maybe my husband will get a job wherever we move or maybe there will be something like a school that will tie us into an area. So this is a unique time and we want to make the most of it. Our son was in a school here in Charleston that we didn't really like and we're planning to move him to the public school of our new home. But since we can't move into that home and we no longer have a contract, we cannot zone into that school. So with all of those plans and everything, basically all our ties to the area getting chopped, we decided, yeah, it's the perfect time to take our family on the road. Now, of course, we do still have COVID to think about. So we want to protect our children. And so we are going to still social distance and we are not renting an RV. I know several people have said just rent an RV, but I will just say that Sarah and RVs don't mix. When I had my house burned down the second time, I had to live in an RV for a while, for months, and it was not, not the place for me. Plus, I'm terrified to drive them, and my husband doesn't want to drive it either. So RV life is awesome, and I love watching it on YouTube, but it is not for us. So instead, we are going to go into Airbnbs. So we are starting our journey on September 1st in St. Petersburg, Florida, and we are going to explore life near the beach in that area and maybe a few other places in Florida. We might be heading to the New Orleans area, maybe some places in Texas, and maybe even some places in the Midwest. We have no idea all of the places we're going. I am a Southern girl at heart, so I tend to like to stay in the South. I would love to be still on the beach, but I'm opening my mind up to the possibility of just living on a lake or living somewhere else in the water, or maybe even just becoming a forest witch and kind of moving into the forest. So I grew up in a log cabin in the middle of the woods, and maybe that is where I'm meant to be instead of the beach. All I can tell you is that I can feel that something in my life is out of alignment and I think that's why there have been so many things that have been like not quite lining up and why we've been trying to build a house or own a house or buy a house here in Charleston for more than four and a half years and some every single time something crazy goes wrong. So we are going to listen to that whisper and that pull of adventure and we are going on the road. <laughs> so this brings up multiple things that we're going to have to think about. In terms of this channel, I am, of course, still planning to upload, but right now we have some extra packing to do and we have showings. So the landlord is showing the house to many people. So some days this coming weekend and next week, we have two full hours. We have to be out of the house 
to allow them to show it. So that is causing some disruption in my work time. Then also I have the notebook challenge for August is coming up this weekend. So you guys will see that hopefully on Sunday. So you'll see a glimpse at which planners I'm trying to take. My husband and I took all of my planners and put them on the table the other day. And I am currently using 17 planners and notebooks basically in rotation. Some of them daily, some of them only once a month, but there's no way I can take that much. The other uh, interesting note, thing to note is that we only have a small Hyundai Elantra because we didn't have really need for two cars since we're mostly working from home and we wanted to save money by using a low mileage car that was already paid off. So this is the car we have to take on our trip and we could buy a new car like a bigger SUV. SUV, but then that might damage our chances of buying a house. If you've ever tried to buy a house with a single person's entrepreneur income, income that's up and down, you know that you definitely don't want to be taking out another big loan right before you buy a house. So we're going to try to make this car work. I'm going, we're going to put a giant bag on the roof and we are going to try to pare down our stuff as much as possible to only the essentials. I have no idea how this is going to work, but every time I think about it, I get super, super excited for the adventure that we're going to be able to take our children on, for the opportunity to explore new places. The first Airbnb that we have is near the beach in St. Petersburg, and it has a beautiful pool in the backyard. And I think that'll be fun to see if the kids really enjoy it and all of that. So we're going to just have fun with it as much as possible. Because when life hands you trouble and struggle after another, it's so important, I think, to really look at the blessings and the places where you are blessed and the advantages that you do have in your life and say, I'm going to maximize and focus on gratitude and I'm going to make the most of this. So how can we turn this into something fun? And so that's exactly what we're going to do. And luckily we have the freedom and the funds to do that. And I am extremely grateful for that. So the notebook challenge this coming weekend for August will be all about which planners I'm taking and how I'm parrying those notebooks and things down. I will continue to do the notebook challenge, but you won't see as much variety while we're on the road. And I might be just telling you instead of bringing a notebook to give away, I might just be sending you a notebook directly from Amazon or Erin Condren or whatever company is the giveaway for the month. In terms of videos, the only real difference that you might see is going to be the background will change. Obviously, I will have to figure out a way to carry my Kanban board with me. So I'm going to show you in a minute some of the ideas I have for carrying my stickers, my planners, my uh, washi tape, and my Kanban board, but if you have any other suggestions, please feel free to leave those in the comments because I am all ears if you have been traveling and that kind of thing and you have suggestions on how to carry your planner supplies in a compact space, let me know for sure. I will be doing a video before we leave on how I have everything packed up. I've bought a crafting tote, like a rolling tote, but it's not here yet. But once I pack that up, I will be share, sure to share that with you for sure. So let's take a look at some of the ideas that I have for how we're going to take this with us. Okay, so here are a few of the solutions I've come up with so far. Let me know any tips and tricks down in the comments because I am all ears for this. So one of the first things is my washi tape. So you guys know I have kind of an extensive washi tape collection and I could take like a big Ziploc bag or something like that of washi and that may be what I end up doing if time doesn't permit me to do this. But this was something I was already starting to work on before. I got this idea from Dr over and on her channel and I will link her channel for you down below. She has uh, posted on her Instagram a few times that she created out of a Muji. Uh, I think it's like a Muji business card book or something like that. So I couldn't find the one at Muji. So I found this one at Amazon. It's just a clear like business card holder and it has all these little sleeves in it and it has one on the front and one on the back so there's actually three on the front and three on the back so you could hold six business cards per sleeve and there's a lot in here I think there's maybe a hundred or so so what I first started trying was I grabbed the hardest part of it is that the entrances to make it easier the entrance or the way to get into this is in the middle so sometimes I kind of tear these but what I first started trying 
was, <laughs> hold on, let me get it out, was using these like RFID cards, I think they're called. They're just like plastic ID cards, uh, similar to what you would get if you like got your driver's license or you got an ID for a work job or whatever. I got these in a hundred pack off of Amazon and I started using those. But what I started to realize very quickly is that these are really thick and to put so many into this book it's going to start taking up space really fast once you also have the washi tape on it so what dakshana says she uses is like an old pack of playing cards but i don't think that this would actually fit playing cards in it so i am using business cards because i had bought like a thousand of my business cards back in the day and then we haven't been having any conferences or anything else so i've just been using business cards and so it's just just plain, much thinner, slimmer business cards, and I can fit about four or so, four or five washies on it. And so all you have to do is you take the business card, sorry, I have to find where they are, and you take your washi tape, so let me see if I can find one, and it's kind of like those little washi sample cards that you can use, and you just line it up. And then I try to make them as straight as possible, although I'm not very good at that kind of detail work. And you just go over and over and over it. So that is one case of what you could do. And I am going about 10 times with the washi so that I get a good amount of it. And I feel like that way I can keep, you know, I can get enough that I can use them throughout my travels, even if we're gone for a really long time. So then I just tear it off and tuck it under, and then I kind of just tuck it in. And I know that if I was constantly taking it off and taking it off and putting it back on, it would eventually wear down the sticky stuff. But since I would just take it off and use it, I think it'll be okay because I've done this kind of thing with washi cards before. And then you just slide it back in. You just have to be careful that none of the pieces are kind of holding up. So I'm not sure how many of these I'll have time to do. That's kind of the biggest time sink now. But you can see from this, I'll be able to carry a lot more washi in this book if I have a chance to fill most of it up but I just don't know that I have the time. I thought about bribing my nine-year-old to get some of it done for me. If I end up having time because we're packing and I've got Publish and Thrive and everything else going, I wanna spend my time there. If I have time to keep working on this, I will do so. Obviously, also I just wanna say that when I bought this off of Amazon, it didn't have any kind of cover to it, so I just put washi book on it with my Cricut and I didn't even do that great of a job with the vinyl because I don't have a lot of experience with it but it still turned out pretty cute so that was just something I added and then I added a little simply gilded sticker but I could potentially carry like 200 different samples or more of washi tape easily in this maybe even like 400 if I wanted so I think this will be a good solution and it's super light and it can just go in my purse or a bag another thing is all my pens and markers now truthfully for a long-term trip even if it is a few months I mostly can just get by with just what I can fit in here and so that's what I'm going to plan to do but I do have two of these different accordion ones from Erin Condren so I have the purple one and then this colorful one so I may fill them both but I also will just have to see how much space I end up actually like really having but you can see that really it, it folds up this like thin when you're not using it but this is pretty full and it really doesn't even take up that much space, but it is like full to the brim with lots and lots and lots of pens. So you could fill like, I could put my one kind of marker here, a bunch of pens here, some, you know, washi tape in this one, some, uh, like correction tape so it will carry more than just the pins so I think I'm going to try to pack all of my pins and most of my like scissors and other supplies in this one thing so we'll see kind of how that goes okay so let's talk stickers <laughs> right now I have I really do have a lot of stickers that I've collected over the years and so I've got them in a lot of these just like dollar 
photo albums that I got from Michaels and that's been working for me pretty well. I try to have them marked with a piece of washi here that this is work and reading or this is coffee or these are my laptops or you know whatever like family cooking things like that. So they're kind of arranged by theme but I have like six or seven of these and then I have a ton of happy planner books and I have a bunch of other stuff that isn't even in these books and then I have another full book that's just full of procrastinate planner etc stickers so I don't think I want to bring so many different things because not only do I want to slim it down I also want to make sure to uh, you know make things easy for me when we're traveling that I can just pull out one thing and I know that's got all my stickers or one thing and it has all my washi or pens so instead of these books I started thinking and looking on YouTube for ideas for stickers and found a video that I'll link for you down below where she had gotten a three ring binder and had bought these hopefully I can get it in the shot <laughs> and then she had bought these inserts that are like photo page protectors or whatever and there's 40 in a set so this was like maybe ten dollars or eight dollars something like that this uh, binder is Amy Tangerine and Avery it's just a one inch binder and I thought this was pretty and it kind of would look cute with this big other colorful rainbow and so I bought this was like eight dollars and this was another maybe ten so pretty good price I think overall for us you know long-term storage solution and your stickers will just fit right in like this so I was thinking that I could take them and put them back to back and then slide them down into here and I can also double up so if I have a bunch of ones that are just like reading ones I could put all the reading ones in one so you could put four or five different sticker sheets in one sleeve so that way I can you know just flip through and I think I'm also going to put tabs on the side here or on the top that have those same sort of themes like work and reading or um cooking or whatever so that I can easily tab through to find the stickers that I want to use. Just another storage thing that I have is this one from Happy Planner and I need to kind of search. I'm sure I'll find it when we're packing but this is a pretty big like thing. Hopefully you can see the whole thing here but it zips up in two different spots and this spot you can see I've used the mess out of it but I was putting a bunch of stickers in here but I could consolidate things like put this washi book in here and maybe some other things then I've got this pouch that could hold like one of my notebooks and another zipper here and then on the other side it has this little pouch like this I wish this was small enough that it would fit in here but it doesn't and then you have these two removable ones that you could carry like longer pins or you know different things like washi or whatever in here and there's another one that goes with it but I just have to find it so I may utilize this if I need it also okay so let's talk about Kanban board so this is ideas that I've gotten from people in my own community that have taken the HB 90 course because obviously not everybody has space or desire to put a giant Kanban board on their wall so there have been some pretty brilliant ideas shared throughout the course and so one of the things I was thinking about doing was using just a folder like this one this cute Hello Kitty one from Erin Condren and what I would do because I still feel like like I could use Trello or something like that but I really like to have it front and center and I like my sticky notes instead of putting it all on digital but I'm going to stay flexible like if this doesn't work then I can try digital and we'll see how it goes but with a folder like this you can just open it up and you could have it sectioned out with like to do doing and done but I think what I will do is put on one side all of my to do items and the other side be my done items and then I can just fold them up and slip them into like this binder right then I found this at Target so I'm going to put this white paper behind it this was in the Target dollar spot maybe a month ago so I don't know if you'll still be able to get it but it's just a little uh, sign that's acrylic sign that says this week and has the seven days plus a little notes section and I was testing it out to see if my stickies would fit on here so here's what I'm thinking is buying some command strips with extra sticky stuff and putting it on like a door or a surface that's not going to get damaged in whatever Airbnb we happen to be in and hanging this up with a command strip near wherever I'm going to be working like the dining room table or a desk or whatever's available having my sticky notes arranged in this folder 
And then every week when I'm ready to start figuring out what I'm going to work on, pulling my sticky notes out that are my current tasks and putting them on the day that I intend to get them done. And that way they can be waiting for me, hanging up in the space wherever I'm working. And then when it gets finished, then I can move it to the done section over here. And that way I can keep my basic system without having to do digital or try something totally radical, but I can also still see front and center what needs to get done this week. So let me know what you think of that and if you have any other ideas for how I could still keep my work visible. Because I have so many sticky notes, I might end up using a folder for each goal. So this would be, I would label this folder goal number one and then have a separate folder for goal number two and so on. And I think that would be a pretty good solution and then I can just slide it, like I said, into the binder and it all kind of lives together. So those are my ideas so far. I also have bought a tote bag that I'm going to be taking. It's like a rolling tote bag to carry all these supplies. So I'll show you that as soon as it comes in and I get it packed up. But those are my ideas so far. If you have any others to share, I'm all ears. So share those down below. So before I say goodbye today, I also wanted to mention to you that my self-publishing course, Publish and Thrive, is actually open for enrollment right now. If you want to create a life for yourself where you can bring in income for your family and maybe go on more vacations and take adventures like this and really find success, not only in the sales numbers and the income, which is great, but also in the mindset of being able to take something and turn it around. This kind of thing that's happening in my life right now happens in indie publishing all the time. And something that people don't talk about enough, in my opinion, in self-publishing and the writing world is that things do change a lot. At any given day, Amazon can announce a new program like Kindle Vela or Kindle Unlimited that can change the entire way that self-publishing works. When you join a community like Publish and Thrive, you not only get all of the information about how to start a business, how to upload, how to format, how to strategize your genre and your keywords and categories and things like that, all the details about your metadata and your back matter, but you also get the marketing side of things in a way that's not about here's how you can spend thousands of dollars on Amazon ads because my course does not really focus on Facebook ads or Amazon ads. You can get that from other people. What sets my course apart is the fact that we focus on on organic ways of growing your audience and on ways that you can personally create a career that matches up with who you want to be and how you want to show up in the world. It's that mindset that creates long-term joy, which is why I called it Publish and Thrive, because it's not just about publish and make a lot of money, because believe it or not, there are a lot of people out there who are publishing, making money, and are unhappy because they're writing things they don't enjoy, they're having to spend a ton of time on advertising and they're having a hard time navigating the ups and downs of some, you know, one day hitting a bestseller list and the next time having a flop. So if you want to learn how to handle things like comparisonitis and how to be able to be flexible, how to handle the ups and downs of the career and also how to start and run your business, then I would love to have you in the course. It only opens two times a year. So I would love for you to come join us. If you're watching this, when this video comes out, registration closes on August 8th and we start on August 9th. There are two hours of live Q&A with me and even though I will be on the road for part of that in St. Petersburg, I will be 100% dedicated to serving you guys and being a part of that community. We already have now over a thousand members that have taken the course or are enrolled now. And a lot of people are publishing their first book, seeing huge increases in their sales, and they're just plain happier. And then they have the whole community to hang out with. So if you want to read more about it, I will have the link for you in the description box below. Other than that, I will see you guys on Sunday with a look at how I'm paring down my planners and my notebooks in the August notebook challenge, along with a new giveaway and then we'll go from there. All right, thank you so much. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button, but more than anything, I would love for you to hit the like button down below if you enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.